Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship here at Middletown Presbyterian Church on this uh, rather gloomy, rainy day, but at least it's not snowing. So, <clears throat> some things to bring to your attention today. Uh, in your bulletin, you have a couple of inserts. One uh, is reminding you if you'd like to order uh, Easter flowers for the sanctuary for Easter, uh, you have a form to do that, so uh, you can fill that out. Also, there's an insert regarding uh, our Seder uh, that we're going to be having Tuesday, April 15th during Holy Week. Uh, and if you would like to help out uh, and cook for that, there are, uh, I think in the narthex, there are uh, recipes available. If you'd like to try something that is sort of authentically Jewish, uh, you can uh, pick those up. Uh, if you would like to cook, please see uh, Linda Fox. She's in the back there. Um, she would be happy to sign you up to do that. Uh, but you can also sign up uh, for the Seder using the form in your bulletin, uh, and we would encourage you to do that so that we have uh, some idea of, of how many people to expect and uh, can prepare correctly. Also, uh, in the month of April, which, believe it or not, starts on Tuesday, uh, the youth will be doing their uh, clothing drive. So if you have any uh, used clothing, if you're doing spring cleaning and want to get uh, some old stuff uh, out of your house, uh, bring it in white, uh, tall white uh, kitchen trash bags, uh, and you can drop it off here, and the, the youth will, uh, they, we have a place that picks it up and actually gives the youth money, uh, I think it's per pound, so bring your stuff. Uh, they'd love to have it. Uh, and also, just a reminder, on Wednesdays, we are continuing a adult Bible study. We just uh, last Wednesday started a new study, Practicing for Mission, uh, so come and join us for that. Uh, and also on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7 throughout Lent, uh, we're doing our sacred space in the chapel, uh, so come. It's about uh, 30 minutes to uh, just spend some time in the presence of God and prepare yourself uh, for Easter. Uh, and I think those are all of our announcements for this morning, uh, so I'd invite you to all stand as we sing uh, our opening gathering song, How Can I Keep From Singing? The words are on the insert in your bulletin. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. Praise the Lord. be seated. <clears throat> we now come to a time of prayer when we can share with one another those things on our hearts and minds that uh, are a joy to us or of concern. Uh, I have a couple to begin with. Um, actually, I don't think she's here at the moment because I think she's still out, uh, hopefully, bringing people on the bus. But uh, our, our dear Diane Batty, who is one of our bus drivers and a, a wonderful member of this congregation, uh, today is her last Sunday with us as she is moving out of town, uh, so we will be praying for her uh, as she goes. Uh, also, uh, Marianne Shinati, uh, Mike Shinati's wife, uh, has uh, been in the hospital this week. Uh, she is um, doing better and uh, is recovering. She had uh, a a lung procedure that uh, didn't go particularly well this week, and we have been praying for her, and we will continue to pray for her this morning. But are there other things? Brenda. Uh, 
Oh. All right, for Norma, who uh, was diagnosed with stomach cancer and they had to remove the stomach. And I'm not sure how that works, but um, we will certainly pray for her. Other things? Ray. Uh, for Ray and his family and for his nieces and nephews on the passing of uh, his sister yesterday. Other things? Ken? Pray for those that from the impact that they had a closer relationship with the Lord and saved God and family. All right, for all of our youth and, and advisors who went uh, to impact, impact, a youth uh, conference this weekend, and we pray that that went well and they all uh, experienced God in some new way. Um, I'd also, I don't know if any of, I'd also left out, we have uh, three of our youth. Uh, Devin and Mark and Alex, who are all in uh, the musical at Pencrest this weekend, and it has been a long week and a long weekend for them, uh, and they are all sitting a little bleary-eyed in the uh, balcony at the moment, but uh, we will lift them up in prayer as well. Are there other things? Donald. Uh, Donald's sister-in-law died, and her uh, funeral was on Thursday. And uh, Bob Smith was nice enough to take Donald up for it. Uh, so we will lift up the Soans family. Are there any other things this morning? Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this morning. Uh, we thank you for the rain which uh, cleanses and waters the earth and and quite frankly, we give you thanks that it is not snow uh, or ice. Uh, and Lord, we uh, give you thanks for this opportunity to gather together in your presence, to worship your name, uh, and uh, to lift those who are on our hearts and minds who are in need of uh, special care this morning. Uh, and today, Lord, we think uh, of Diane Batty, and we give you thanks for her and for her time among us and all that she has uh, done uh, in service to you uh, through this church and others. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would bless her as she goes, uh, bless uh, her family as, as they uh, move to a new area and location. And Lord, that we just uh, pray that even now you would be preparing the right church uh, for her wherever it is uh, that they end up. And Lord, we just ask your blessing upon Diane uh, and uh, just uh, pray that you would continue uh, to work in her wherever she is. Uh, we also want to lift up Marianne uh, Shinati. We give you thanks, Lord, for the way that you have uh, protected her this week and ha have brought her through a very difficult week, and we just pray that you would continue to give her strength and encouragement uh, and bring her healing. Uh, we also want to lift up her husband, Mike, and uh, their son, Chris, uh, as they've had an exhausting week as well, and just pray that you would continue to, to strengthen and encourage them as they try to take care of everything that needs to be taken care of and, and care for Marianne as well. And uh, we just ask your blessing upon all of them. Uh, we lift up Norma, uh, who we have prayed for and uh, who was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Uh, Lord, we understand that they've had to remove her stomach and um, I, I don't even know how that works or, or what that means, but Lord, we just lift her to you and pray that, uh, that you would be with her and with her doctors uh, and nurses as they uh, treat her, and uh, we just pray that uh, you would strengthen her body and uh, just give her healing, Lord. We also want to lift up the Soans family and uh, the Fox uh, extended family uh, as they both have suffered loss this week, and um, Lord, we just pray that you would be in their presence, uh, that you would bring them uh, some comfort, and uh, even in the midst of uh, sorrow, uh, bring them joy uh, and uh, Lord, that you would just uh, help them to, to love and support one another uh, and that you would be in their midst. And we ask your blessing upon both families. Uh, we give you thanks for, for Bob Smith and his willingness to take a day and uh, take Donald up uh, so he could be present for his uh, sister-in-law's services. And uh, we just ask your continued blessing on him. And Lord, we also want to lift up our youth, uh, those who went on impact this weekend, and we just pray that that has been a, a great weekend for them and that they have experienced you in some uh, new and, and life-impacting way, and uh, we just uh, ask your blessing upon them and ask that you would uh, be with them as they travel home. 
uh, keep them safe. Uh, and we lift up uh, those youth who are in the musical this weekend. Uh, give them uh, strength and energy as they uh, embark on their final performance this afternoon and uh, just uh, make it a, a great afternoon uh, and give them rest this week somehow in the midst of all of their other activities uh, and give them strength and blessing. Uh, and Lord, we lift all of these things to you as well as uh, our thanks for all the many blessings that you pour out upon us, and we lift them all in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing our hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. And as we're singing, I invite the children to come down for uh, the children's sermon. May be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It is a good morning, even though it's rainy. And you know, on a, on a nice rainy day like this, there's nothing like a hot steaming bowl of pasta. Right? Yeah, I love pasta. So I, I brought some pasta this morning. There you go. Well, you, you don't want to eat this pasta? It's nice and crunchy. No? This isn't how you eat pasta? Oh, then, okay. Is that better? Oh, there's no sauce on it yet. But it's but it's cooked at least. But I mean, what's the difference? I mean, they're the same. 
In fact, they came right out of the same box. Maybe, but you don't, don't want to eat this one? And you know, well, If you take this, and I think you said it, you put it in some boiling water and you make it kind of soft and edible, that kind of improves it, doesn't it? And in a way, I mean, he doesn't boil us, but in a way, that's kind of what, what God does with us. I mean, this is really, I mean, it's the same ingredients. It's, it's, these are really exactly the same, but somehow, magically, through the, the magic of cooking, this becomes this. And the Bible tells us that sometimes our hearts get hard like rock and crunchy and brittle. But God says, I will take your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh, nice and soft and, and well, kind of mushy. But that allows us then to love God and to love each other and turn from kind of hard, crusty old people to soft, loving people. And that's what God does. We're, we're essentially the same people, but God changes us in this cool way that, that makes us better people. So let's pray this morning. Lord, we give you thanks that you love us and that you loved us even before we came to you, when our hearts were hard and, and crunchy, crunchy and, and miserable. And that, Lord, when we turn to you, you took those hearts of stone and gave us new hearts that we might love you and that we might love each other. Help us to remember that and help us to reach out to one another and to those throughout the world in love, reflecting your love for us to them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. The ushers will now come forward. We will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. i 
Let us pray together. Jesus Messiah, you are Lord of all, and we give you thanks for the many blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. Lord, we offer these, our gifts to you, and pray that you accept them, that you will multiply them and use them to further your kingdom in this world. For we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. This morning's New Testament reading is from John 9, 1 through 12, and it can be found on page 78 in your pew Bible. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but is someone like him? He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
doing today? Yeah, you look great. Come on in. Come and feed your bodies and your souls. Come on in. Hey, Elmer, how are you doing? Yep. Now, Elmer, you know that your money is no good here. Yeah, so just take what? Elmer, your, your money is no good anyway. This is a million dollar bill with, with your face on it. <laughs> Just come in and get something to eat. Hey, now you're not one of our regulars. In fact, you don't even look like most of our regulars. <laughs> you're the guy from the Jerusalem show bar. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're glad to have you here. This is, uh, this is it. Yeah, this is the... Salome Soup Kitchen and Vocational Training Cooperative. Yeah, well, you know, we've been around for about three years. Our mission is really the, the same as Jesus' mission. That it, What? Well, yeah, I, I was born blind. But that's really not what I was going to tell you about. I was going to tell you... What was that like? Is that really a question? What, what was it like to be blind? It stinks. I mean, it's, it's no life at all. I mean, until recently, I mean, if you were blind or, or deaf or, or, or mute or, or lame, I mean, pretty much you had no life. It was, it was begging on the street corners. Uh, there was really no chance of of any meaningful work, there was no chance of marriage or family or it was, well, it was no life at all. And, and the way people treated you as, you know, I, I learned some things, you know, people who can see, they they seem to think that if you're blind, you must also be deaf. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, if people were talking right to you, which they didn't very often, they would talk loud. <laughs> like, because I couldn't see them, I, I couldn't hear them either. But most of the time, they would just talk about you, right in front of you. Like, like you couldn't hear what they were saying. Now, uh, at the same time, sometimes people would have conversations thinking nobody else was hearing and you would learn some interesting things. But, uh, but people always treated you with pity and, and shame because, I mean, the, the thinking is that, that if you're blind, especially if you were born blind, then then either you or your parents, you must have done something to deserve it. In fact, my, my mom and dad, when I was born, they lost most of their friends because people just assumed they must have done something to deserve this burden. And, I mean, mom and dad are they're great people. They're, they're God-fearing. They, they know the Scriptures. My, they, would, they would tell me all the stories about, about Adam and, and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. They, they knew them all. And they would tell me the stories of the faith. But to be honest, even as a blind man, I didn't see much faith happening around me. People standing right in front of me. And then, you know, the, the Pharisees, they were probably the worst of them all. They would come by me every day as, as I sat at the gates of the temple. And they might toss me a few coins, but then they would, they would make these grand pronouncements. Oh, Lord, thank You that I am not like this poor fellow a sinner 
who deserves the condition that he's in. Yeah, that's really helpful. And the way they treated my parents was no better. Now, I have to admit, they weren't all bad. There were, there were a couple of guys. A guy named Nicodemus and his friend Joe, they, they actually, they sometimes would come and, and actually sit with me and, and ask me how mom and dad were and ask me how I was doing, and, and they would actually pray with me. But uh, most of the rest of them... I had no use for. To be honest, I hated the Pharisees. I mean, if you heard some of the things they said about other people, uh, remember, they didn't think that I could hear them. I mean, talk about hypocrites. I, I, I had no use for them. Couldn't stand them. If it, well, to be honest, I, I didn't really like much of anybody. I mean, I hated them because of what they did to me and, and my parents and the way we were treated. I really kind of, some little part of me hated my mom and dad because even though I, I didn't agree with what people were saying, the fact that people actually said it made me wonder. I hated God because, I mean, Regardless of who was at fault, wasn't he the one that created me this way? Wasn't he the one who imprisoned me in this, in this broken body? But if I'm honest, I, I probably hated myself the most. I mean, what, what good was I? I, I was dependent on on everybody else. I couldn't do anything for myself. I was a burden to my, to my family, to my community. And then one day, it was, uh, it was a Sabbath because I wasn't allowed to beg on the Sabbath, so I was just sitting outside of our house on our little street here in Jerusalem, and, and I, I heard this, this group coming toward me, and the voices were not familiar. They were, they were out-of-towners, because at least in our neighborhood, I, I knew most everybody else's voices, but I could hear them as they were coming up, and, and one of them says, to one of the others, uh, look, there, there's a blind man. And, and the other said, well, I, uh, this man has been blind since birth. I, uh, to be honest, I have no idea how he knew that. And, and then another one pipes up and says, well, then who sinned, this man or his parents that he was born blind? And I thought, oh, great, here we go again. But then this voice spoke. I mean, it was a voice unlike any other I'd ever heard. I mean, it was, it was sort of soft-spoken, but it had this, this strength, this, this authority that just the voice itself to listen. And he said something that I had never heard anyone suggest before. He said, this is not about sin. This, this man has done nothing. His, his parents have done nothing that, that is related to this. But this is an opportunity this is an opportunity for us to see God work. Now, I had no idea what he was talking about, but it was the first time that, that someone had referred to me and to my condition without blame. Well, the next thing I knew, I could hear him sort of shuffling around 
in the dirt right near me. And, <laughs> and then he's, he's slapping mud on my eyes. I'm thinking, buddy, what is going on here? But then that voice again. And he, he grabbed me by the hands and he, he pulled me up and he said, Son, I want you to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. That, that's all he said. He didn't say why. Well, except the obvious. I mean, he had just put mud all over my face. Well, uh, Siloam was way down the bottom of the mountain. It was the, the, the farthest point in, in Jerusalem, at the, at the bottom of the hill. So I, I had to call my mom and dad so they could lead me down there. Uh, they had a lot of questions, and I, I, I said, uh, he told me to go, and I, I don't know why, but I, I just feel like I, I have to obey. So, so they walked me through the streets of Jerusalem, mud still running down my face, and we came to the pool, and they led me up to the edge, and I splashed the water on my face, and <laughs> I could see, I mean, I could see I could see colors, I could see trees, I could see people, I could, I could see the well, I could see the rippling in the water. Well, <laughs> my poor mom and dad, I just left them there at the well and I, I ran back through the city because I could run. I, I could walk on my own, I could, I could skip, I could jump. Well, I, I got back to my neighborhood and I, I'm still laughing and, and crying out and I mean, some of my neighbors, they... They recognized immediately that, that I could see, and they, that they were hugging me, and, and then there were others who were like, well, this can't be the same guy. He was, he was blind this morning. You saw him. This, is, this has got to be somebody who looks like him. I said, no, it's, it's me. It's really me. This, this guy, uh, I think his name was Jesus, he, he, he put mud on my eyes and sent me down to the pool, and I, I washed, and, and I can see. Well, then they started talking. They said, well, well, we have to take you to the temple. We, we have to present you to, to, the, to the Pharisees, to the priests, and, uh, and have this miracle certified. Well, I, I was a little reluctant at first, and then I thought, this is my opportunity. I can go rub it in their faces. I've got a thing or two I'd like to say to those Pharisees. Sure, I'll go. And so they took me up, and the Pharisees started asking me all sorts of questions. So, who did this? I said, well, I don't really know. I think his name was Jesus. Uh, I only heard his voice. I mean, by the time I got back from washing my face, he was gone. Well, what did he do? Well, you know, I, he put mud on my eyes. He told me to go wash. Well, where is he now? I just told you. I, I don't know. The last time I encountered her, I was blind. Well, <laughs> they didn't really believe me. Now, these are the same Pharisees who pass me every day going into the temple, and they don't recognize me. So they call in my parents. They make my poor parents come all the way into the temple for the Inquisition. And they're asking them ridiculous questions. Is this your son? Yeah. Was he born blind? Yeah. And, and how is it that he can now see? Now, see, this was the trick question. Because we already knew they'd been questioning all sorts of people about this guy, and I guess it was Jesus, who'd been claiming he was the Messiah. And if people agreed with that claim, they kicked him out of the synagogue. So my parents said, well, we don't know. 
he's old enough, he's an adult, you ask him. Smart move. So they let my parents go and they called me back in. How did this happen? Were you not paying attention the first time that I told you? Well, we want to know. I said, well, I already told you what happened. That's all I know. This morning, I was blind. Now, I can see you as plain as day. Well, then they began discussing among themselves. Many of them were saying, well, if this Jesus can do this, he must be getting his power from the devil. And others, and Nicodemus and Joseph were two of them, were saying, well, wait a minute, guys. We have never seen anyone open the eyes of a man who was born blind. Anyone who can, who can do that, I mean, their power must come from God. Well, they, they were really going at it pretty good when finally... Somebody with a level head said, whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't we ask the guy who was healed what he thinks? <laughs> well, I said, listen, it seems to me I was blind, I can see. As you guys were just saying, that's never happened before. It seems to me this guy must have the Spirit of God. I mean, he's at least got to be a prophet, right? Well, they didn't like that at all. <laughs> and they kept asking me questions, and <laughs> so I saw my opportunity. I said, why are you guys getting all in a fuss about this? What, do you want to become his disciples too? <laughs> Oh, man, they did not like that. They said, listen here, boy, you may be his disciple, but we're disciples of Moses because we know that Moses talked to God, but we don't even know who this guy is. I said, really? You're spending an awful lot of the time talking about him for somebody you don't know who he is. Well, that was pretty much <laughs> the end of the conversation. That's when they called the temple guards and had me dragged through the temple and thrown out into the streets. I remember I'm lying there in the dust and I'm thinking about how I'm going to get back up and I'm going to march myself back into the temple and I'm going to tell them exactly what I think about them and exactly what they can do with their religion. But before I could even get myself up off the ground, there was a hand and he lifted me up and then I looked up I don't know what it was but I, I knew this was Jesus and he just looked at me and I said Give me a minute, Jesus. I'm just going to go in there and tell them exact. <laughs> no, but really, I mean, you know how they are. You know what they did. They deserve. And then he said to me, My son, do you believe? in the Son of Man? Do, do you believe in the Messiah? To be honest, Jesus, I, I don't know what I believe. But if, if you could just, just kind of lay it out for me. I, I'm not well educated. I, I don't know a lot of stuff. Stuff, but if you just tell me who he is, I believe in him. And I had to say, even as I was saying the words, I, I knew what he was going to say. 
He said, I am he. <laughs> I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, I, I fell back to my knees. And I just looked up at him and I said, what do I do now? And he looked at me and he said, think about what has been done for you and you'll know. I didn't really know what he meant at first, but as I, as I thought about it, I thought, he gave me a life that I never had. He gave me an opportunity that I didn't think was possible. And then I I thought, he, he sent me to the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. But where was I being sent? About a, a year and a half later, it was, uh, it was coming up to Passover, and and Jesus had made his way back to Jerusalem, and, and on that first day of that week, he, he, he arrived, and, and a bunch of us gathered together. It was like a, a parade. We were waving palms and stuff as, as he came in. It was a great day. It's the best day that week. It turned out to be a difficult week. But there was an, another guy who had followed Jesus from Jericho, Bart, <laughs> Bartimaeus. He'd been blind too. Well, uh, we kind of ran into each other in the parade, and we got to talking and sharing our stories, and, and he felt sort of like I did. And as we started talking about it, we thought, well, he gave us a life. Maybe, maybe we're called to, to help Him give that to other people. And, and given our experiences, we, we thought the, the most natural place to start was, was those that the rest of society had pretty much cast aside, you know, the, the blind and the lame and the deaf and the mute and the so we, we started this place. It's just a soup kitchen at first. It's been, it's been kind of great because there's been this whole growing community of Jesus followers here in Jerusalem, and, and they've all been helping and, and supporting and giving money and, and bringing food. There's even a guy out in, in Bethany, uh, Lazarus. Yeah, he and his two sisters have a little place out there, and, and, and they bring food in all the time. And then, as it started growing, we, we thought maybe we can, we can bring in other people to help, help train some of these people so they could actually work and, and have some meaning and purpose in their lives. We've seen some of them get healed, but not all of them. But they're beginning to sense that, that they're not just refuse, that they're not just throwaways. <laughs> so that's, that's the story of this place. And I still, I still don't know a whole lot, 
but I know that God's grace is amazing. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, (laughs) but now I see. Let's sing together. seated. Remember that our Lord Jesus Christ is able to sympathize with us in all of our weaknesses. 
In every respect, he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us pray together the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that you came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear, so that those who have never seen will see, and those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind. We confess that we have been blind, blind to the needs and feelings of others, blind to the ways that you are working in the world around us and within our own lives, blind to those things you desire to do in us and through us. Open our eyes that we may see the world as you see it, full of hope and potential. Open our eyes that we may see others as you see them, as your beloved children in desperate need of knowing their Heavenly Father. Open our eyes that we may see ourselves as you see us, as forgiven and cherished companions, blessed and sent by you to be a blessing to all. We give you all the glory, Jesus, for it is in your mighty name that we pray. The Lord God has said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, we are all broken, in need of a Savior. But know that you have a Savior. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But that blood and that forgiveness and that healing is available to you. Be blessed and go out into God's world to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.